Hi, this is Ruven, and I'm here to answer your Python problems. I guess answer your Python questions is the right way to put it. In any event, um, I got a great question from Patrick, and Patrick asks, um, the short problem is the following, but I haven't found a simple solution yet. Given a variable of type byte, how do I convert it to string if I don't know what encoding decoding I should use? All right, so the answer is you can't. That's the short answer. But let's go into this a little more deeply because a lot of people are really confused about this whole bytes versus character issue. First of all, I am working here with Python 3, and I'm going to assume you're working also with Python 3. Python 2 was a totally different kettle of fish. One of the most massive changes in Python between versions 2 and 3 was the change in the way that strings work. So let's say that I have here um, you know, a string, s equals a, b, c, d. Right? And if we say, what's the len of s? Well, the len of s is going to be 4. And this makes sense to us, right? There are four characters in there. There are four letters in there. Makes sense to me. I can totally go with that. What about, though, if I have characters that are of a different character set? For example, I live in Israel, so we use Hebrew. So I'm going to write here. I'm going to use my uh, Hebrew keyboard. I'm going to write shalom. How we say hello and goodbye. If I say, what's the len of s? Also 4. This, though is where things get interesting. Because it is true that there are four characters here, four letters here, and it's also true that there are four letters here. But behind the scenes, they're represented in radically different ways. These characters, because they are Latin characters from English and were included in ASCII, take up one byte a piece. These characters, because they're in Hebrew, and other languages like uh, Arabic, Russian, Greek, and even you know special characters, special to Americans, right? Characters in uh, you know French and uh, Spanish and Portuguese. Those take up two bytes. Now, why would I care about that? Truth be told, in my day-to-day -day work, I don't care about that. I don't want to care about that. If I want to print the first letter in Shalom, I want to be able to say print S of zero and just be done with it and get that Shin character. I don't want to have to worry about how many bytes is it and how many places do I have to move through. So this is all done behind the scenes in magic, um, thanks to the magic of Unicode. And Unicode basically says, let's assign a unique number to every character ever created by people. That's a lie, but let's call it that for now. Um, so every letter, every character ever created is going to get a unique number. And then the way that that Unicode number is represented, in Python at least, is using what's called UTF-8. Again, a bit of a lie, but we'll go with it for now. UTF-8 means that basically if it's ASCII, it gets one byte. If it's um, uh, Hebrew, Arabic, Russian, Greek, and so forth, it gets two bytes. And character uh, languages like Chinese and Japanese often will get three bytes, or in theory, more. And all those emojis that all those kids nowadays are loving to use on their phones, those are also Unicode characters. And each one of them takes up a certain number of bytes. So normally in our day-to-day -day work, we don't really care about these bytes. We want to think in terms of text and in terms of characters. But there are times when we do, there are times when we have to. And for those times when I have to deal with um, uh, like bunches of bytes, Python has a separate data type known as bytes. So if I say here, bytes of ABC, I'm going to get back, oops, sorry, I have to say here, I, I can't just say bytes of ABC. I have to say, well, what is it getting it from? Actually, the easiest way to create a byte string is to put a B before the opening quote. And then I get what's called a byte string. And I say here, you know, B equals that thing. What's the type of B? It says bytes. And now, how, is bytes, how are bytes different from strings? In that we care about the individual bytes. So if I say here, print, you know, B of zero, it will still work. But look what I'm getting back here. I'm getting it back the number of an individual character, of an individual letter, of an individual byte, more importantly. So if I'm using ASCII, fine, it's going to give back 97, which is the ASCII value of lowercase a. But what if I try once again my Hebrew, right? So, and I want to translate this into bytes. If I say bytes of s, it's going to go crazy on me. It's going to say, no, 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 you can't do that without specifying an encoding, meaning I need to know how these characters are represented in bytes so that when I turn them into bytes, I'll know how to read them. And so I'm going to say here, oh, well, these are encoding equals UTF-8. And sure enough, now I get a whole bunch of bytes. Now, this might look like total nonsense to you, but it's not. I mean, I mean, it looks like nonsense to people, right? But basically what we're getting are the individual bytes that put together will give us our um, four Hebrew characters. This is what it was like to work with Unicode before we actually had nice Python 3 strings. Again, a bit of an exaggeration, but not too much of one. Now, to get back to Patrick's question, he's saying, I have a bunch of bytes. Let's say here, I'm going to say b equals this. I have a bunch of bytes. 
I don't know the encoding. How can I turn to a string? And so what I said before is you can't. Because if I now say, well, let's create a string from this. I'm going to say stir from B. If I just try doing that, it's going to, well, it'll do sort of what I want, but not exactly so great, right? What can I say here encoding equals you get that? I think I can. Yeah. Right? And so what we've said is I want you to create a string based on B and interpret those bytes as being UTF-8. But what if I say, oh, that's not UTF-8. What if I say it's Latin 1? It's going to go crazy on us. I will get things, but these are not the things that I'm all, that I'm going to want. There's some characters in here that just make no sense in Latin 1. Latin 1, by the way, is the sort of ASCII plus that was used in much of Western Europe uh, for a long time, and it's still used on occasion, just because you get to use one byte. The lower half is used for ASCII, the upper half is used for you know the unusual characters, the non-ASCII characters that those languages need. So. How let now it's obvious to us from looking at this, especially if you know Hebrew, right, that translating it from bytes into UTF 8 was the right thing to do, and translating from bytes into Latin 1 was the wrong thing to do. We might even be able to do uh, let's let's try Latin 8. This won't work either, but no, it doesn't even know what Latin 8 is. I used to be able to say like ISO 8859 8, and it doesn't, yeah, and here now 8859 8 means um, basically ASCII plus Hebrew. So we actually use this in Israel quite a bit. This is what happens when you use these, those upper, uh, that upper half of the byte for Hebrew characters. But look what's going on here. It's saying Unicode decoder. It's like, I do not know what you want from me, but this is definitely not 8859-8. So there's no way for Python to sort of guess correctly. And if you're saying, well, why does it just try until it gets something correct? Um, there are a lot of encodings out there. I mean, a lot, a lot of encodings, like hundreds of them Maybe even thousands, but definitely hundreds. And so there's no way for Python to really know for sure what you want to do. So the, the journey from strings to bytes are, is generally pretty clear. We have to say what the encoding is of our string, um, but that's almost always going to be UTF-8. But the journey from bytes to strings, you must, must, must give an encoding, and it will differ from time to time. If you don't specify it, Python might give you what you want, and it'll look just kind of crazy. And it might not give you what you want because there's no way to turn that into Unicode uh, characters. I'll add one little thing about this. In Python 2, we would read from files and we would get strings, but strings in Python 2 were like our bytes here, our byte strings in Python 3. I mean, it was just a bunch of bytes. So I could read from a text file or a file with, you know, all sorts of, you know, Unicode characters in it, or I could read a binary file, like an exe file or pdf file or png and that was totally fine because my strings in python 2 were just a bunch of bytes who cares what it is in python 3 i can't do that if i'm reading from a binary file i need to specify that i want to get bytes rather than characters because what will happen is python will try to read those bytes and turn them into characters just like it did here and it'll give us a unicode error let's see if i can find uh something on my computer that uh, let me just uh, sort of go off to the this side here. Ba, 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 ba. Let's just see if I can find like a PNG or something that'll be useful for me to check on. Let's just see. Let's see. Uh, yeah. So let's just uh, find. I'm gonna move this. Well, actually, I'll just copy it on my. It's on my desktop already. So watch this. I'm gonna say here. File name equals users Ruben desktop coach sales.png. And if I say here f equals open file name, right? So that's good. F dot read. It's gonna go crazy. I mean the same sort of Unicode decode error because it's trying to take those bytes and turn them into uh, Unicode characters, but that's not gonna happen because we've got a PNG. Now we can always open a file with just R, right? But not here because if I just say R, it's gonna try to read it in as a string. And that'll again give me an error. But I can say RB, and RB means read it as bytes. And now when I read it in, I get all those things. And it starts with that B just as I did when I gave a literal uh, byte string before. So hopefully this answers the question that Patrick had. Thank you so much for your question. As a reward, you get 30% off any of my products, including the upcoming weekly Python exercise. Thanks so much. And if you, any, any of you, have questions that you want to submit to me that I'll try to solve here on my video channel, send it in, ruven at learner.co.il, ruven at learner.co.il. Thanks a lot, and I'll be back soon with another problem to solve.